Hello. Hi, guys. How's it going? Welcome to the practice room. We don't really have a logo that much. Dude, or, uh, we're not like, like a jingle. Yeah. Welcome to the practice room. Do 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 do. I feel like we'd have to go <laughs> with like and, something like a rap or something. You know what? Like not everyone has a jingle though. Like that, that's like a thing that that like it like there's there, like there's big YouTube channels that have them, and then there's ones that don't. Yeah. Some of them spend a little bit more time on the in card, but there's a. You know, like like if if I'm thinking of YouTube animators, like Domix's jingle right. is throughout all of his videos, and it's just a real quick. You know, title screen, mm-hmm. and then you go in. And but there, but but there's plenty of others, uh, like like Jaden Animations are the odd ones out that don't use it at all, and they just go straight into the video. Right, and that's kind of its own. I guess that has some kind of like, I wouldn't say charm, but like more like just. It's whatever appeals to you. Yeah. You know? uh, but uh, and if you want to put in the effort to make a little like opening, opening thing, right. one of the one of the ones I've I've liked recently um, is a gaming channel called uh, Metal Jesus Rocks. Uh, and he does. He's just a game collector that you know goes to conventions and 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 shows what he picks up, talks about systems, stuff like that. And he right. does it. He does. He does a. He does a fun one where he plays. You know this little guitar riff, and then it's showing like all of. Uh, it's it's showing like highlight moments from the channel mm-hmm. and. Uh, gameplay footage and so you really get a good mix of like okay here's what this guy's about and you're like all right now i know whether or not i want to sit through this 20 minute video (laughs) right you know based based on that but other people just dive right into it and there's really no there's really no intro right but anyways guys (laughs) so (laughs) here's a rant aside Either way, uh, when I'm, I'm Jordan's gonna... drawing today. Yeah. For 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 those of you that are new, this is on a program called yeah. Lip Sprite. Uh yeah, I've been drawing on Lip Sprite for about the past year and a half, and uh, I've had I think I've explained to everybody here on the channel that I have not really done an actual like human character. No, this is a this is a bit of a first attempt here. We're stepping into some new territory. Yeah, some. Bleak territory. <laughs> not really bleak, but I, I'm only saying that because I'm not the most confident in this. But we'll see what we can it's, get done. It's a hard thing to draw, man. Hewitt's have got a lot of weird little parts to it's, it that you th- you 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 know you think you can just break us down into a bunch of simple shapes, but when you really try to make something look convincingly human to where like you're comfortable looking at it, yeah, there's a lot of little things that have to. Especially, fit together and you're especially like, when it comes to anime's kind of stuff. I think. Mm-hmm. You got, like, I think. Yeah. I have a little. I have so much respect for the people that do anime drawings, whether they be like from a video game or like, or um, or kind of like with a with just regular anime like i think they're they're really good artists yeah it's it's impressive and it and in a difficult task because a one you know anime is kind of known for its exaggerated features yes. and, and expressions and 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 the artists do a really really good job of of you know conveying that and and style and you still being like i like looking at this it's this is not off putting to me even yeah. though their eyes are huge and there is compared no nose. Compared to like what? You know. <laughs> compared to what I'm doing right now. <laughs> getting that getting that nice peak going. Yeah. So, so uh, who are we drawing today here? So here's the deal. Um, I am actually drawing a character from Blaze Blue. What? Her name, well, obviously you know because I told you, but like the audience doesn't know. You sure they're not well, from My Hero? <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> do you want me to? Next time. Next oh, time. dude, I, I'm all down for trying to draw my hero characters. <laughs> but no. Um, yes, uh, this character, her name is uh, called Mai Hatsume. Hatsume? Hatsume. Ha- Hatsume. I think that's how they pronounce it in the game. Um, or if you actually read the, if you actually read the manga for this, uh, her name is actually Mai Hatsuki. And, uh, there's a reason why, obviously I won't tell because, well, if people still, if people want to read the Remix Heart, spoiler alert, if people want to read the Remix Heart, uh, manga, then they can. It's basically following this character right here. She's the... I would say she's the main character of the story. In the manga? Yes, because she they follow her. And um, actually, they sh- uh, they also follow certain other characters that we know, like um, Makoto, Noel, Tsubaki. Um, cool. And others. Uh, actually, Ragna's in one of the chapters, but... <laughs> Uh, but he's not in the. But the thing is, it, it's following the military academy, uh, Torfu in uh, Torfune. Oh, so the whole group that went to school together. Yes, and I think yeah, and uh, she uh, also met Jin too. So like Carl would probably be in there. Uh, he is. So like everybody that's like part of the military academy. Oh, sorry. Um, Part of the military academy is actually in this uh, manga. Nice. And the thing is with with Mai, um, if you don't know about her, she's actually she you in the game or in the games in uh, in lore. She's actually not a at first. She's not a female. She's actually a dude. So ah, the old trap. No, uh, no, I don't think she's technically a trap. She's actually a full woman. Like, ah. And it's because of a, a certain grimoire that touched her. Okay. That fused with her body. Or his body to make him a du- uh, a girl. Mm-hmm. So, the thing is, is that um, as, the, as the time goes on, like when she's at, at um, when she's at the military academy, um, She's kind of going through some parental issues. Well, it, it, not because that she's he's he turned into a she, but mm-hmm. more so that like her father is kind of like a I wouldn't say a strict dad, but more like just kind of expecting because um hold her to a high standard. Yeah. Because uh, she's also part of the duodec, uh, her family's part of the duodecium, right? And um, in lore, the duodecium is obviously like, like the, the high aristocratic families. Yeah, they're kind of like I would say old money, but that would be a little bit too nice. Mm-hmm. No, they're more like um, All right. top top households. Yeah, and kind of your standard heads of the. Shogunate or whatever was the original yeah. Warring States period. And like I said, her father is part of one of the families and she and she feels that she's not being well as being a female well not really being a female, but more like what happened to her was obviously well it sucks, but um she seems to make the best of it. Yeah, she tries to make the best of it, especially with her friends. And actually, um the whole the reason why it's the uh, the name it's called Remix Heart is the group that they make like Makoto, uh, Makoto, uh, Noel, Subaki, and Mai, and her friend Kajun. Uh, they actually make it like a a group called Remix Heart, and what it's entailing is actually um like they're kind of like a Scooby Doo kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. It, it's kind of like a Scooby Doo kind of mystery uh, gang. You got to find three clues and not really find pull three. off a mask, and it turns it's, out it was the it's sheriff, the janitor, or something. Or... Yeah. Um, no, actually, they investigate certain places to find more grimoire. 
I love the classic Scooby Doo's. In the like in the manga, they actually find more grimoire mm-hmm. compared to you know just the regular Azure or like. There's other types of grimoires. Yeah, there are other types of grimoires, and the thing is, is that what's really cool about it is like um, it's explained that grimoires technically aren't like like with Ragna, like technically the Azure grimoire, while it takes the form and oh god. <laughs> yeah, Lips Ray likes to do that. <laughs> um, no, no, no. So, the Azure Grimoire, while it takes the form of an arm, obviously, is it is not an arm. It's basically just taking the form of that. Right. But with certain Grimoire, like I said, they, they take the forms of other things. Like, um, there's one actually called the Truth Grimoire, and... Um, it is in its uh, its form is in a mirror, and I believe what it does it tells the truth about like certain like things that you ask it. Oh. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a mirror mirror on the wall kind of thing. But uh, yeah, um, but it said it's not like an actual. It's not like a. It doesn't talk to you. No. It 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 kind of shows what what um. What it's doing. Who's the fairest of them all? Uh, Yo mama. Yo what? Yo mama. So, <laughs> I feel like they would make like a joke about like um, Noel being a cutting board. I don't know. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who has the fairest tits of them all? Oh, jeez. I mean, come on, man. You can't <laughs> tell me that, that that hasn't come up. Well... Not in this instance, no. Yeah, that's a little bit too thick. Too thick lines. So, so yeah, like that's that's the whole um, story behind story behind. Well, not really story, but like you you get the thing is you get to see uh, certain characters also as well. Like I said, like you you follow uh, you obviously follow the group that was in the military academy. But like I said, Ragna shows up. Um, uh, actually, Relia shows up too. Oh yeah, and uh, who else? Who else does? Uh, and then there's obviously some new characters. Um, there's kind of like a character that's relate. I wouldn't say related to um, ha- um, Kaguya, but he kind of he kind of looks like his like lost long brother. Okay. And then um. There's actually a Kaka clan member there. Interesting. Uh, there's a whole. Um, it was cool because it was like kind of like a whole assassination plot. Oh really? Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Hibiki, the guy that's uh, this is a character, and uh, he works for uh, Ka- for Kaguya. Kaguya. But his family is um, is well known to being like an assassin. Like a clan, not really a clan of assassins, but like a family of assassins. A family of assassins. Like their assassin technique is really pronounced. It's in that a family, family tradition. tradition. And um, hmm. I'm just adding hair where I don't know if it should be, but like You're just throwing hair all over. I mean, hey, like I do like here's the deal. I do like the fact that like. It doesn't look... Honestly, it doesn't look bad. No. In a sense. Just pouring on some layers. Huh? Pouring on the layers. Yeah. I think the layers... I think the shading layers kind of make a decent amount of progress compared to my lack of skill on this. Well, and and because you're doing it in the program, you can grab stuff and resize it. So it's not like detrimental to detail things now, yeah, because you don't have to erase them to move them around. Right. I think I'm gonna. Not sure if we've explained Blaze Blue to the audience before, but it's a it's a it's a fighting game. It's a two D fighting game. Yeah. Um. It's actually like Arc Systems. Obviously made that and um, and um, guilty gear and the thing is is that like I think 
the reason why I like Blaze Blue, well, I'm I'm saying this is more of an opinion than anything, because I know Guilty Gear is really good, but um, the reason why I like Blaze Blue a lot a little bit more is because of how story driven it is. Even though the story is kind of strange, like there's like a the, lot to it. The whole concept of like stuff happening constantly is kind of weird. Yeah, we're two games in and we still don't know what's going on. Yeah, some, <laughs> like, sometimes we don't know what the fuck is happening. Like, I wish we did, but... Fitting some pieces together. They like to do the whole, you know, pronoun game and mysteries and <gasps> it's you, you know? And, yeah. And... What are you planning? Oh, you know, and and then and you know fade to black, and you <laughs> yeah, like no, you wouldn't was, dare. Oh, I would. Oh, I and would. Then they yeah, cut out. shit like that. <laughs> and the thing is, is like this vague nonsense, and you're like, oh, I gotta play this whole other game to figure out what exactly. they were saying before. It's a game within a game. Oh yeah. Definitely don't have to go down the story uh, rabbit hole to enjoy it, but it does make it fun. Honestly, like. The thing about it is, is like having that game just kind of be oh, what the hell? Okay, there we go. Having the game be kind of like vague itself is just not bad because it doesn't give like a a certain cliche kind of story. Mm-hmm. It definitely gives a. Um, well, let's use some imagination. Yeah. Or or we spend a lot of time cuz we basically couch co-op the story. Yeah, we usually wind, we wind up just spending a lot of time like pausing halfway and coming up with our own theories of what we think is going down. I mean, we always I mean, let's be honest, dude. We always think of the Ragnar Harum route. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's a that's always a good one to default usually, to. Usually like guys um so the main character Ragna, he's he's usually like not he's not like the bright oh he's not the brightest character, but he's certainly not the dumbest. But he just gets in these situations like he's like he's like he he he's like the equivalent of breaking like five thousand broken mirrors and then going under like going under like uh forty ladders. Yeah. Opening several umbrellas indoors. Yeah, and tripping on the black cat onto a crack. <laughs> tripping uh, on tripping on a thousand nagos. A thousand Yodorichis. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just it took me a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All you bleach fans out there, you know what's up. Um That's funny. I yeah, so like with Ragna, like it's not the fact that like he doesn't have a woman in his life. It's that the fact that he has too much too much woman in his life to a point where he can't sit down. It really becomes a problem. Yeah, especially with uh with like robotic women trying to kill him. Yeah. I think it <laughs> I mean, like not to mention like certain char- other characters are just a total fucking tool to him. You have to add on to the fact that there are killer cyborgs. Well, I wouldn't say cyborgs, but like more like just killer ro- robotic. It's pretty, pretty much a cyborg. Yeah. Because it's still got like bionic elements or bi- biological elements to it. Yeah. But then they then they have like an exoskeleton. I would say that, yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, well, Ragna doesn't need any more woman in his life. Because right. And then you, and then the gag reels like they really hammer home the point that he is like the harem protagonist in the game. For all you out there, like, um, by the way, if you like, I said if you haven't played these games, go ahead and play them because if if you don't really care for the story, that's okay. It's I stay for the gag reels. They are pretty fun. The gag reels, honestly, are probably some of the funniest things in the game. Yeah, so a gag reel is basically like a it's a it's a pseudo 
canon moment that's written into the game where it's like a like it's like an alternate timeline story where they just kind of have a fun moment but it's not part yeah. of the main story and then the thing is also um and guy and it's, it's like the beach episode it's <laughs> yeah like there's at no there are multiple beach episodes in, in the gag so, room. yeah some of, some them, of them, are them are actual beach episodes some of them aren't like don't worry and and before anybody says we're perverts don't worry some of the beach episodes are actually uh no we're men not, of culture yeah exactly no man i'm kind of more like a man man of memes hmm. i don't know memes are a culture uh well all right then but um but yeah like it's not all about the whole like waifu thing in that game well it can be if give you give or want take, it to, but it's not necessary. Give or take, but I do like I enjoy the story elements. Oh, of no. fighting games more so than than just the the gameplay. I itself. think it's because here's the um, reason why I think fighting some fighting game uh, storylines are funny and are just wacky as shit, but I still like it. It's because they still. It's because they don't need. Here's the deal: fighting games they don't owe you shit. Honestly, I'm not saying they owe you shit, but they kind of don't. When you put a storyline and you put like a funny storyline that you like listening to into that, it just kind of adds on to how much fun you can have with the series. And like, as, and Blaze Blue especially. I, I know we're getting into a time where like, um, for, where uh, fighting games usually need to have a, uh, oh wait, where did my reference go? Oops. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, like... They usually have a story. Yeah, nowadays they do. But the thing is, is that they used to just not. They used to just say, screw it. Well, no, and well, and, and one of the... Uh, sometimes the fighting games didn't need a story because the characters of the fighting game were from movies or TV shows. Oh, yes, yes. And so they already had their own backstory that you didn't really need to explain. Well, that just depends on guest characters. Like, certain guest characters in, um, case in point, in Mortal Kombat, like you had in, um, in, um, in MKX, you had, like, the Predator and the Xenomorph Alien. And then you have a Leatherface, and yeah, you had the Predator, the Alien, Leatherface, and that's about it. Yeah, I, I think I was thinking more like Marvel versus Capcom, uh, but that, oh. that's also a similar effect. Well, the deal is here. Here's the deal with Marvel versus Capcom. It's kind of different because in that instance, they're in a crossover world. So it's kind of like free reign on what kind of novelties you can put into the story, right? But you already know who the oh and yeah oh no 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 I get that I'm saying like with with Marvel vs. Well, yeah, what you get to do with it yeah is 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 all up in the air and can be really fun. But unfortunately, and I'm sad to say this because I really like I said I'm a really big fan of Marvel vs. Capcom. What? <laughs> I well, I mean, I love fighting games hmm. in general. I I really love the Marvel vs. Capcom series. I think they're probably one of my favorite video games of all time because the the whole idea of like a crossover of like Marvel characters with with like some of my favorite Capcom games, like the most I mean, ambitious like, crossover in history. I mean, you, it basically, it basically was like back in the nineties. Like, it was so. It was so wacky, <laughs> but it was, but it worked. It fucking worked so well. Oh yeah. And like, and what we got out of it was like just some of the coolest like fighting games that we've ever had. But with all things, there are always those black sheep or those really bad games that you play. And Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was one of those games. Pretty bad. Yes, that game. Well, in terms of gameplay, it was fine. But in terms of story, holy shit, it was awful. <laughs> it was complete garbage. <laughs> like, I wish I forgot about it. Fuck. Like, the story was so cliche. It was so, like, 
it was so like one dimensional. And I know you guys are going to say, well, fighting games don't need that. Honestly, like nowadays, now that like Mortal Kombat 9 kind of set like a precedence of like a, a video game story. Yeah. Like I, I, I kind of expect it to be like, oh, not, not to blow me out of the water, but more like just give me some kind of context as to why they're doing the crossover. Because it, at that point, they're explaining. Like, how the crossover happened. Yeah, it's not organic. No. And, like, the, the, in the story... In the story for uh, MVCI, they try to explain that Ultron um, goes to Able City, and Able City is the... For those of you who don't know, uh, Able City is the the tech universe... Or, the tech universe, the, the tech city that uh, Mega, the Mega Man X series is in. And um, the only way uh, they actually go with the Mistress Death instead, like instead of like using like Thanos's background, like in the MVC universe, mm-hmm. they use the whole plot of like Lady Death in the series. Was that, like, that so was they, the lady from Thor Ragnarok? No, that was Hera. Uh, lady Death is one of the four horsemen in in the. Uh, in the Marvels, in the Marvel comics. Okay. So Thanos originally has an infatuation with Death, like he he loves her and he wants to destroy the whole whole universe for her, for her heart. Aw, so romantic. I know, so romantic and genocidal, you know. Um. Well, then there'll be no one to witness the wedding except for them. So <laughs> the deal really is. Count? <laughs> <laughs> so the deal is, is that. Ultron, well, the thing is, is like, um, I, I don't want to tell you this because this is part of the story, but I don't know if you really give a shit. That's the thing. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of want to discourage people from playing the game, so I want to kind of tell you <laughs> because the game is so bad. I'm going to ruin this story so you don't play it. No, I'm sorry, dude. It just, it's just, uh, and, the, and it doesn't help that the sprites look. God awful. But I don't think people getting into fighting games are going to jump into Marvel Marvel's versus Capcom. Capcom so, do you think I you think I should tell them? Yeah, that's okay. that's not the that's not the one that anyone thinks of out of the gate. The first thing people think of is is Mortal Kombat. Oh the yeah. The second thing's probably Street Fighter. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just tell you. So the thing is is that in the beginning of the story um there is a Darkstalkers character called Jedidoma. And um, Death does not know her, know her, uh, know him, because, well, he's part of the other universe. Like, he's part of the Capcom universe. So she does not know him. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, is that, like, the problem that Jedda is having right now is that, like, um, he wants to create the birth of a god in, in his actual universe, with a th- with like a million souls. Okay. So he wants to partner. The thing is, is that he wants to partner up with Death to kind of harbor those souls. And like, there are certain characters in the Marvel in the Capcom universe that can't really die. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, but he's still trying to give the. He wants to give those souls to Death to make her stronger. Okay. But in order to do that, and to have, like, in order to get to the universes, they need all six of the Infinity Stones. Oh. Uh, in order to harvest harvest all of that. Yeah. So, what Death does is she comes up with the idea of Thanos um, becoming her pawn, because, like I said, he's so infatuated with her. Mm-hmm. And... She says she's tired. She's tires of the universe, like of the Marvel universe. So she wants to conquer a new realm, and she she brings it up to brings that up to Thanos, and he's like, "Okay, your will will be done." And um, she already has like one of the stones. She has the space stone, and the uh, for him to take. Like she, he already has the space. Like she already has the space stone gift to Thanos, 
And now they're trying to look for the reality stone. And the reality stone is hidden in a um on in a force field in Able City. Mm-hmm. Or in Able City, and that's in like another reality. Right. And there's a portal that is uh that is blocking that entryway. So so, um, and, and it's not for, it's not that Thanos can't do it. It's the fact that, like, um, it's the fact that he's a fleshy organic that he can't do it. So Ultron, so they're getting, going to get Ultron to do it. Ah. Instead. Yeah, Ultron would be a good Mega Man villain. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Like when he, when Ultron got to into the into the uh, the system and he got past the barrier, he met up with Sigma, which is um, the if you guys don't know, he's the uh, antagonist for uh, for Mega Man X. So Sigma and so Sigma and uh, Ultron meet up. And they have this conversation about, like, well, they, they were thinking about destroying each other at first because one was infiltrating and the other wasn't, or was totally, like... Chilling out. Defending his uh, area. Yeah, defending the place. So, and they were like, oh, like, it's a pity that I have to destroy you. Your code is intriguing. So they were kind of, like, not sizing each other up, but they were kind of just complimenting each other like in a villainous kind of sort of way <laughs> you would be a formidable rival it's a yeah, shame basically, I have to kill you yeah they were saying like you're like um, ultra, uh, Sigma was kind you're of just pretty complimenting cool. I'd it. love to hang out but I'm a bad guy so I gotta do bad guy things well no I mean they're bad they're both bad obviously but um, with Sigma he was like your code is, code is intriguing and then like um Ultron was like yours is like poetry, like a hymn to order. But um, but you have a grotesque fle- like grotesque body, and it's because he's human. Like he has a like a human, like a human look. Yeah, like Sigma. And then he, and then like Sigma's like, oh, it's a means to an end. Like it's just this I have no attachment to it. So they kind of come. So, I'm not really a human. I just look like one. Yeah. So what they do is that they come to. They try to come to a compromise to try and like to do something to um, try to control the world or control both universes. And they they were thinking of using the Infinity Stones to do it. So they were going to go and go, uh, double cross uh, Thanos and the others to have this power. Yeah. So then like the two of them agreed to try to try and do that. But instead of oh, excuse me. <laughs> but instead of <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, my food. So instead of um trying to destroy everybody Sigma has a better idea with trying to uh, with trying to actually unify everybody Instead. against Ultron. No, 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 no. To unify everybody as like human and organic alike. Mm. Oh, go for the 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 symbiotic route on uh, on Mass Effect Three. Kind of, yeah. Um, basically. Um, when they fought for, when they, uh, f- kind of, uh, joined together as forces, as one, what they wanted was, uh, actually, okay, so, <laughs> here's kind of a roadblock. What do we got? Okay, so, I'm trying to make a neck right here, yep. and the thing is, is that, like, there is a collar piece that's, like, on that section. Yeah. So... The whole deal about this is what I need to do is I need to, uh, 
You can just draw the shoulders and then do the collar piece on top of it. Yeah, you're right. But then, but the shoulders are kind of like way down in that picture. And then just sketch. Then, then just do like the outline of the collar piece to help you place stuff. Yeah, you're right. Hold on. So, anyways, so when they create this this plan, um, Thanos find well, Thanos was able to get to Evil City, and like. Uh, try to get the uh, Infinity Stones. No. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. It's a, it's a difficult piece. Um, collars... <sighs> you, uh, usually... Uh, they're kind of... They're kind of steeply sloped, and then, and then they'll wrap around behind the back of the neck. Um, but I, I, t- I typically draw them in later, you know, I, but it's, but it's, it's interesting. So I'm, you know, I do sketchy style and, and Jordan's pixel art style and, and they're, um, that they're, they're kind of different in their approaches. Cause like one of the things that's a little bit more difficult in lib sprite is to just, just, you know, hash out a bunch of construction lines. And, 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 you know, slowly kind of layer on top of it. This, uh, this is more like, uh, you know, kind of drawing like a printer where you just kind of go straight down with the, with the full detail as you go. Uh, and it makes for an interesting, um, different kind of approach. I've actually never watched those videos where those, where they're like, I I know how to draw like a printer. (laughs) Uh, Oh, there was a run where I kept seeing them get recommended. Uh, okay, okay. All right, so as I was saying, s- s- okay, okay. All right, now here's a delicate process that I'm going to have to figure out. I'm finagling the hair a little bit here. Yes, yeah, so here's the deal with mice hair. Um, I'm going to totally like. Um, I know, I'm gonna pull. I'll, I'll pull up your reference on my phone just <laughs> so I can have the context as well. Ah, no. Well, that's kind of funny looking. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. There we go. Yeah. So she's got. The front and side bangs that are covering, you know, her ears and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, there's long, there's two long strips that go out and around the front of the shoulders. Oh, I see, Yeah. Okay. I see your collar deal. That's a, that's actually a pretty square collar. It's not very slopey. No, it's not. But it's, it's pretty much just straight across. Like if you, if you start at the bottom of the chin and just went, you know, with with like a three degree angle left and right, um, they're not. It's not very steep at all. No. And and the sides of the collar, uh, like you're not going to see the turn. The sides will just be covered up by a piece of the hair, uh, and you won't really see her again until it's on the outer edge of the shoulder and a little bit of her lat. Wait, that's your. Which one's your lat? That one. What's the muscle that's on the top of the shoulder called? Uh, not not the shoulder muscle, but the thing like that's on the that's on your back, but it connects the top of the shoulder to your neck. I can't remember what that's called. Anyway, are those deltoids? Maybe I don't know. I gotta look up a muscle chart. <laughs> Hang on, we're gonna figure this out. I did not take anatomy. Neither did I. Muscle chart. No, not muscle dot chart. Because hmm. I fat finger my space bar. Let's see here. Let's see here. Parts of the body. 
Not an exercise guide. Traps. Those are your traps. Traps, okay. Your trapezius. Trapezius glutinous. Well, I don't know if they're glutinous. But they're <laughs> well, trapezius. glutinous obviously is your ass. But yeah. <laughs> your butt cheeks. Oh. <laughs> That's also a muscle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It's actually probably one of the strongest muscles. Well, strong, strongest. Um, I know it's there's some. I think it's your biggest one. I think. I think it's the heart. It's technically your heart is your hardest work or most like consistently working muscle. I meant like I've it's the hardest like to break. It's hardest to break. The strongest muscle. It's know. really hard to break your ass. Yeah, which is yeah, like, not your tailbone, but the actual like muscle of your butt. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one to like actually tear. You Yeah, cuz in a in a position where where you would need to be to to try to injure that muscle, something else would break first either on your yeah. leg or on your hip or on your back. Like that it's it's not in the it's not in the spot where you could put stress on it only and yeah. nothing else. As far as the muscle by itself is concerned, I guess you could cramp it if you flex too hard, but yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's about the worst you could do. I don't know how you would flex your ass muscles. You just kind of sh- like that's squeeze fine. your cheeks together. Ugh. <laughs> you no. you've seen you've seen Patrick Starr do the Iron Buns workout? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Dream body. I don't need that. That's that's how you do it. I don't need that reminder, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that reminder. That's a that is a classic. Please. Oh no, the iron buns and they just crack. The iron <laughs> buns. I was even doing it in my sleep. I'm gonna blow up twice. Oh man. Okay, back back to the. Anyways. Back um, to the drawing, drawing. Sorry. Um, back to my story. So, um, well, first of all, I wanted to just explain. So, this is what I, I had for the... Your delt's the front of your shoulder. This is what I had for the, the hair. And I was able to... What f- are those? I was actually able to kind of to fix it. Oh, the obliques are the inside part. Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking of. I think I was able to fix the side of the hair that I wanted. Yeah? I think I got it. All right. Um, I'm still trying to work on that. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back to my, back to my Marvel vs. Capcom story. So, well, the story. So, yeah, like, Thanos gets to Able City, and then, like, they meet up with Sigma. But they, uh, they both knew they were there, obviously. Like, Ultron and Sigma were there. And then the first thing that Sig- uh, Ultron does is, he destroys Sigma. <laughs> like, he kills him. Well, gee. And the, th- and the reason why is because uh, in the series, Sigma usually does die, but he doesn't, like, die in a sense where he's, like, completely destroyed. His code is preserved. Or... Well, he's the Sigma... Vi- like, Sigma has, is the Sigma virus. Like he, he's a fucking virus. Right. And... You have to, like, destroy all the computers to kill him. Not really, but, like, just kind of... The whole gimmick with him is that it's like so sad. Steve Jobs died of Sigma. Oh no! I love that meme. No, that <laughs> meme is funny. I'm serious. No, no, no. It's, it goes like this. It goes like <laughs> Steve Jobs died of Sigma. And then Who's like, Steve and then the Jobs? guy from the guy from the from the from the, from the Watchmen's like, "Who's Steve Jobs?" And then the guy, and then the other one's like, "Sigma balls." <laughs> and then he fucking just. He disintegrates, and the guy's like, "No!" It's a it's a really enjoyable joke. Oh my um, fucking god! I'm sorry that because it's like it's like it's 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 funny in that it's just a ligma joke by itself, but it's also funny that it like <sighs> so, the joke teller is so committed to it that he's just gonna plow through the utter confusion of you know Ooh, like of this the, well <laughs> of, of the who is Steve Jobs statement like. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that somebody, yeah, like that, that no, the other, the, the person you're telling the joke to has no concept of the context, but you just crash through it with the same tone of voice at all. <laughs> I just think it's funny just how the guy literally was like, it was, it was like, like, and like the, just in a straight face, just lick my balls. Just yeah. That fucking tone, it just kills me. Yeah, I think that's like the. I can't really, I can't really think of another type of joke like that. Where you, I mean, it reminds where you basically me of plow it, through honestly, the joke anyway. Well, it it reminded me of these nuts. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, yeah, it could be like a like a these nuts or a what are those maybe. It really kind of reminds me of just like, like really long, like 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 if you've ever heard like the Norm Macdonald moth joke, like if it's like, like it, it's kind of it's it's almost got an element of the like the really long form plow through. You tell this terrible joke with a straight face, yeah, and people are wondering if it's still a joke. While you while while you continue through it, and then you then you finish this this you know lame punchline, but it's hilarious because you've committed to a full like five minutes, minutes. Of setup to this awful joke that winds up making it funny. A little bit different format, but still, yeah, still similar. Okay, it's a very so funny. I have a problem with this. Yeah, and it's the fact that the neck is kind of like weird. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Nope, those are muscles. Uh, here's the neck. Well, it's it's long. There. I just don't want it to be really, really fucking long. It's well. It, I mean, draw it one way, and then you can just move the head if it's too long or short. If you uh okay okay here's your here's your here's your measurement. So from that that point that you had it on the hair. Yeah. And down to the bottom of the chin is going to be halfway and where the collar starts. And then the collar is that same distance down. Right. Okay. So a, I That's a that's a good kind of eyeball measurement of it. So do you think it's like no. No, to the bottom of the chin. Oh, okay. Okay. Like the like to the point. Yeah, hold on. So like the point, and then a little low on the start. Low what? You started low, like just Josh, like a straight horizontal line from the bottom of the chin to the neck. Oh. <laughs> you can't. You can't curve a line up to fix your mistake. I can't. Oh, damn it. Oh. Start at the chin and just draw straight all right, to all the right, left. All right. I'm not cheating. Fine. Okay. I won't cheat. Are you tried to curve to finagle it in like like the finesse. In, like I wouldn't. No, stop drawing <laughs> from the bottom of that line. Damn it. All, all right, right. All right. Start at the chin. No, 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 and go straight left. You went down. Oh, fuck. Pick, pick it, there, 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 there. There. That's uh, that's uh, ha- angle. That's half of the neck. Angle. I did it. <laughs> I fucking did it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's the that's half of the neck and where your collar starts. Shit. Now go like copy that line and just go the same distance. <laughs> Down. And right, that'll hold on, be hold the bo- Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, okay. So, what did you say? That, that line. This one? You Yeah, you just drew half the neck. Okay. To go the same distance under that line, and that's going to be the collar. The top of that'll be the top of the collar to the bottom of the collar. Right here? No. Wait. What? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that the, the vertical line that's the outside of the neck that you have right now. Yes. Copy that down. Well, you know, mirror it over the line. Whatever, whatever you can kind of figure is a similar. 
it's going to be longer than that. You want it should be about the same distance, not maybe. Yeah, oh, there. that's about right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> she looks like a giraffe because you're missing the context. Yeah, yeah, I know. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, you mean the because once you draw on the shoulders and the collarbone. Or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's gonna when you fill it'll out make, the rest of the body, it makes sense. It'll make sense. And and can but that's a good that's a good guide point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No 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 no. Uh. Guys. Yeah, uh, this is uh, at, at Whole Foods. I, I know you. I'd like uh, to have a, a store in our uh, city. Uh-huh. It's uh, it's South Park, Colorado. No, 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 that was about what it was. Yeah, I mean that's what I mean that's kind of what we just went through right there. <laughs> it was a good combination of that and head for the lid. The lid. Okay, okay. So now, if I want to make the collar, that's your collar. Where this? Remember, because the hair is going to cut that off. And so, yeah. So if you want to do the, so if you want to do the bottom of the collar, you're just going to kind of. Just you know, it's 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 a little bit of a it's a little bit of a curve. You'll dip you'll dip down a bit and then you'll come back up to the same height of the chin on the other side of the oh. face. With oh. the chin's kind of like your midpoint of the curve. Okay. What am I doing? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Damn it! It's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. <laughs> no one. I, I can't. Our seating arrangement. I'm back on the couch, and Jordan's up at the desk. Yeah. At the computer, and so I can't like run over there and point out stuff without leaving the mic. <laughs> yeah. On it, like, guy. I know this is kind of like bad. This is this is fun. Oh my god. We're watching a quality train wreck Fuck. here. Keep going. Oh, Keep going. Fine. I want absolute carnage. Every car must be derailed. Fine. At least half of them on fire. All right. Okay. Like if you play if you ever played Uncharted 2 and the or is it 3? Uh it's, it's 2. No, it's 3. It's no, it's 2. two. Oh, it's yes, good. it's two. Because it's Lazarevich. Drake! 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 You will not stand in the way of destiny. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that scene when, when they were chasing him on the train in the mountains and then the train gets like blown up and derailed. and, and the No, that's three. That's t- I think that's two. Uh, sure. Yes, because three was three started in London, and and the bad guys were the old lady and her hench dude. Oh yeah, and what? you you were using one of the British guys to like work in there as a grunt, you know, in their inner circle. Yeah, and you were trying to you may the end of the game was in the desert. Um, and you got to ride around on horses with some cool Arabian dudes. Uh, you almost died in the desert. There was a whole plane crash. You almost died. Fight. Yeah, the first first game is is swamps. No, no, no. Second uh, game is swamps because you you were Sully. You were Sully in all of them. I know, but you <laughs> fuck. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, the first, the first, the first game, you're 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 in the swamps. You you go to the temple and you find all the Aztecs, and then you um, uh, then you find the the submarine, the U boat, and then you go uh, crap. Uh, oh, 
it's too you blurry. Go to diff- you, do, you go to a different jungle where uh, uh, <laughs> Elaine, Elena uh, catches up to you. Yeah. Because you had ditched her like at, at the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah. And, then you're, and then you're running through that city. Um, no, I thought, here's the deal. And then you find the... Here's the deal. Crap. What was the treasure of the first? It was oh, it was the it was the sarcophagus that was turning everyone evil, and they oh, try yeah. to airlift the sarcophagus out, and then you have the big fight on the boat. Yeah. Uh, at the end, that was the first. I thought one. you were in like Java or someplace. You were. Yeah, for a in, bit in the second game. The second game. Because, like I said, like because the reason why I remember that is because like Sully made like a line. To Drake, he's like, "Oh, I'm sweating more than a hook than a hooker in church." And then, like, fucking, and then like Drake's like, "You want a hooker to church?" I think that was the first game. But no, that, that was definitely the second game. Okay, we'll have to. We're gonna have to play that game we'll again. Have to look it up. This, but the second, the second game is the whole Lazarevich arc, where you, um, you start in the snow. In the in the snowy mountain. No, 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 no. No, you that's three. You don't start there. No, that no, you're right. No, that's still two. Um, but crap, where did you begin? Oh, you break into the museum. Yeah, that's you, the you second start game. The, yeah, the second game. You start by breaking into the museum with your crew. Yeah, and then, and then like, you, get, you get sold out. Yeah, and then uh, oh, and then you're in prison. They bail you out of prison. And you, uh... Try to f- you're trying to find that fucking guy. Like, he's kind of like an adventurer like you. Yeah, Flynn. Flynn, yeah. In like Flynn. What? In like Flynn. I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and... But you do, you, you do and, kind of... Di- and, no, 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 you're right, you're right. You do start... In the game, you start off, like, almost dying in the snow. In, a tr- in like, a fallen train in the second game. Yeah, because no, that's the train's what gets you to the snow because you you wind up chasing him down. No, I know, and the you thing get, is, and your girlfriend. Yeah, you drive the jeep until you hop on the train, and then you fight your way down the train, and then the train crash. It was a huge like travel transition. It was yeah. it was really awesome. It's and your train, strange, the train crashed in the snow, and that's when the the Himalayan guy picks you up. Yes, and, yes, and the, and then you're in the snow, and you have to defend the village, and then you go. Through the snowy temple, and well, don't you the, remember your girl, your quote unquote girlfriend's yeah, last Elena, wife? Elena shows up too. Yeah. Well, they're not married yet. That's not until the fourth game. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah, but then you go through the snow temple, uh, and you fight off the monsters, and then and and then you get to the to the gates to Shambhala. And, yeah. you, and and you go through, and then Lazarevich drinks the water, and then, and then he then becomes you, all powerful. And you have the whole like the worst. Who is the fight chick? Who is the like? If you play on crushing difficulty, who is the British chick? The Chloe. Br- Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. Chloe was was part of your heist crew at the beginning. I honestly thought she was going to be like with Drake or something. I was a little bit thinking it, and then it was it was one of those we're too we're too bad for each other. Yeah. We couldn't like we couldn't fucking we we're couldn't. A, we're a great one time fling and heist crew, but we well, could we, are, we would not we would be so. terrible if we tried actually making a serious relationship. Yeah, and and he had already there there was some strong feelings from Elena. From Elena, yeah. Uh, you weren't yeah you weren't gonna fight that one. The third game. Is when you go uh, uh, to the Arabian town, yeah, and you're and oh, I remember you had promised you were going to stop adventuring. Oh, it, the third game yeah. starts with you and Chloe. That's what it was, and, and she like, calls you in for one more job, basically, and then you're running through the town looking through the for the temple, and then you you bump into it. No, wait, I'm mixing games again. <laughs> Time out. No, 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 no. Ye, no, no, no. Okay, all the the temples. It Chloe is only in the second game. Oof, she's not in the third one. I totally. I don't know why I keep shaking those up. You, but running through the temples in the, I think it was like in India was was part of the gig. Yeah. I, I think that was this before you got onto the train. Yeah. Um. But ah no please no 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 the third the third game you're in London you find the secret cave. Uh, then you go to the castle to go look for whatever the guy had pointed out in the stars. Um, 
And then you wind up. You wind up in Albuquerque. Uh, then you then you then you stick into the airport. Uh, you, you, well, you you run through the town first, and and the truck is like crashing as it's chasing you through the town. Yeah. And then you then you get on the plane, and then you you basically wreck the plane during a fight. Yeah. And then and then you're in the desert, stranded. You almost die. You stumble into a city, and then the dudes on horseback come in and save you. And and then you ride after the convoy. Oh, okay. And uh, and then you they. You basically everyone meets in the in the in the city. Uh, God, which it was another one of the mythical cities, and the whole the whole gig was Narnia. That, the whole gig was that the water was poisoned because they threw the ashes of whatever was the bad guy into the water, <laughs> and it turned him into these like a demon figures. Um, so so remember, Tomb Raider, yeah, and then the. It's hard to not copy Tomb Raider. Yeah, and especially in that instance, I guess. Uh, but they they wind up being pretty different. Yeah, no, no, no. They, Honestly, like the Uncharted what, series is really. You know, you can say like all of the all of those kinds of like treasure hunter adventure games are all the same or copying each other. I don't know who was first, but they 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 have pretty. Well, different obviously, Tomb Raider was first. Identities. But I I wonder if there was something before Tomb Raider. You know, uh, I can't I can't think there of may have been. something off the top of my head because Tomb Raider is pretty old. Yeah, it is. Um, but then the city starts crumbling, and you you kill the evil lady uh, drowns in quicksand, and uh, then you shoot the the guy that you know was funny? Inch dude. You know what's as funny? He's trying to kill Sully. You know what's funny? What? Quicksand isn't apparently in real life. Quicksand is not as dangerous as you think it is. Well, it was like super quicksand because the city uh, super was, quicksand. Yeah, because the city was collapsing into it, and it was a it was a whole event. But yeah, IRL quicksand. Well, I, it, I've seen it though. Like I've like I've seen people like sinking into it, and you don't get nervous until you're about up to their knees, and then they're like, "Oh crap! Oh shit!" <laughs> like if like, and I get like if you were by yourself, you're done. You, oh yeah, you, you would. Ab- this is absolutely something that could kill somebody, but if you're with other people, it's pretty easy to for them yeah, to pull you, can, you I out mean, of it. You, people, yeah, people could definitely pull you out. You really, from what I saw, you really don't sink if you don't move. But it, you can actually wind up sinking pretty quickly if you are moving. Yeah, just don't panic. Um, I'm just saying, don't panic because yeah. Well, that's that's like all the life and death situations. Is the way not to die is don't panic. But when you're actually faced with potential potential death, death. it's so easy to panic. <laughs> like because you can't practice for something. Like I almost that. did. I don't. I don't know if you. I actually, no, no, no. Like I almost actually just recently this week, like at my job, I almost. I almost died. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, do tell. So. Um, if you guys don't know, well, you guys don't know, but I work... You guys don't know. I work at a, um, in a warehouse that sells pull products. And, uh, one of the products that we do sell ever in our warehouse is a PVC. So, I almost killed myself by accident by, um, uh... There's like a couple stacks of PVC that's like right uh, on t- like above me, and then like I was trying to get the second last one because that's this is a specific PVC pipe that I needed. Right. And um, funny thing was is that I almost had um, uh, I cut too much of the strings that were holding the pipe. And the thing almost came down. Oh, like the whole rack was about to fall on. Yeah, it. but like, luckily, I stopped. I stopped enough to a point where, like, um, shit. That it didn't just crush you. Yeah, but it definitely was fucking scary. I bet. Yeah, you don't realize how how quickly you just wind up in those kinds of situations. Yeah. I remember, uh, I, I remember our, our track coach. You you were a thrower, so you probably never heard this, but uh, um, one of the one of the things we did basically when you do or when we did our track workouts was you would um, 
it you know they would it would be your you would be trading your distance uh, and and your time running it and the effort put into to basically make your time you know would be like you should be running an eighty percent you should be running ninety percent ninety five percent yeah whatever you're you know you know because you don't you don't always train at your max speed kind of thing yeah and and one of them was like all right as fat it it was like our you know big time trial day and it was like all right you're gonna run this as fast as you can like we want a full 99 percent out of you and we were thinking what's 100 percent and he's like oh you you don't run 100 percent until you're being chased by a bear it fuck (laughs) no you'll know when you're running a hundred percent it's it's not an on purpose run it's literally an (laughs) adrenaline it's the full on run survival (laughs) that's a that's a whole nother level of run that's like no that's like a hundred and ten percent like yeah sometimes adrenaline can just make you do shit that you wouldn't really you do. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. I used to watch those like those those like little little like superhuman moments or or whatever where people would be in like these near death situations and then they would like like they would unlock like the other two thirds of their muscular strength and lift a giant boulder off of you know that was crushing their leg out in the mountains yeah. or I, or there'd be it's usually related to lifting like there's there's things where moms have like lift cars off of their <laughs> run over there's, there's been a couple of moments of like superhuman strength super mother feats basically because people were like i'm either gonna move i'm this gonna thing die or i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna yeah. move it now so like all the yeah all the like their brain sends out all the chemicals removing their limiters it's like fucking removing the blaze blue. A little bit. Restriction six 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 deployed. Your yeah, going to your final form, all that good stuff. Yeah. Oh, I mean, my final form was gonna die if I didn't. If I just use didn't use my brain. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a whole thing on putting putting your body in survival situations. I. Alex, I didn't want to do it, that. It but. reacts pretty inter- it, interestingly. Like it's a, it's amazing how much you're like even even though you're not consciously thinking about it, your body's will to survive it will like override you. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, man! I am not dying. <laughs> uh, I'm so obsessed now with this hair. I think it's just because it's a tough, you know, piece to put together. Uh, and you want it to look good. So. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop right here, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't think it looked too bad. No, this is this is a pretty good start. Yeah, I'll definitely um, try to improve as we go on, but it's all you know. We'll it's see. Your, when it's your it's your first time doing this style, and and it's especially with going to take practice. All I honestly, Alex, all I want to preserve are the eyes. I those think are, the eyes. I think the eyes look really good. Those are though. some good eyes. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and comment honestly. On you, those. You, you want my honest opinion? What? It's because of you, man. What? Remember that? Remember you said that made that example of. Like having the circle in the eye, like if you're drawing anime. Yeah, yeah, I did draw that out. Yeah, you did. It was with Izuki chan, oh. and I think I was like, "Wow, this looks really good." There you go. And I think, I think uh, there we go. I do look good. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're gonna end it off here, guys. Um, I'm definitely gonna try to draw some more of my, uh, more of my. Um, more my what more my what (laughs) remember Steve Jobs who's Steve Jobs Steve Jobs died of ligma who is Steve Jobs ligma balls what and then we all disintegrate but anyways uh, I think that wraps up I can't talk I don't know about wraps I can't close I can't close line. But anyways. Um, We're going to go ahead and control S. and I'm going to control F my life right now. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> Alex, speak. You enjoyed our content. Please. Yeah. Anyways. 
Hopefully if you I get, won't melt before I finish the Inktober run. Oh, yeah. I, I bet that's taking a toll on you. It is. Well, by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be over. Yeah, honestly, like... Um, <laughs> 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 our upload schedule is fucked. But we'll try to, we'll try to actually... Um, we'll try to upload more, guys, and right. put it on the channel. But anyways, we make all these promises to nobody because exactly. it will be so late. <laughs> yeah, at this point, we'll be like dead with all these videos that we've been making shit. But anyways, we'll see you guys next time on the next recording. I think Alex is going to I'm going to do something. I You're don't gonna, know what. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> It'll be a total mystery. Exactly. All right. Bye. Anyways, we'll see you guys later. Welcome to the practice room.